This is the pile of wood right here that's going to end up being this violin. So we have a little work to do. <laughs> story how I, I got into violin making. I took a music degree from St. Cloud State College then and taught orchestra down in Mankato. In the summer I would go up to Banff, Alberta and they had a music school there and one of the violin teachers there said well if you come to London I'll take you as a student. So I decided wow I'm not gonna pass this up. I went to London studied with him. Then I did come back to the States and I taught another year down at Mankato. And I thought, I want to see more of the world. So <laughs> I quit my job there, went over to uh, the middle of Europe, a little country called Luxembourg, and I toured through Germany, France, over to Salzburg, Austria, way over to Vienna. And from Vienna, I went down to Venice, Italy. Now, in Venice, Italy, I had planned to take a boat to Israel. I got to the dock, and I said, I, I, I want to go to Israel. And he says, no, you're not. And I said, what do you mean? He says, war just broke out in Israel. The Israeli aircraft striking simultaneously at targets in Egypt, Syria. So I thought, oh boy, what am I going to do now? <laughs> and I knew from my reading that the little town of Cremona, Italy, was where Antonio Stradivari, the great, greatest violin maker ever, lived and worked. And so I thought, well, I'll go over there. And I remember I arrived on a Sunday afternoon and met this American in the center town, the plaza there, who was going to this violin making school. I didn't know anything about it. He says, why don't you come visit? So the next Monday morning, <laughs> I went to visit and the maestro says, do you want to come make violins? I said, well, sure. So I did a year thinking I would return to my teaching, but I just fell in love with the violin making. And I decided to do another three and a half years. I did four and a half years it wasn't all schooling. I did three years of schooling with a very, uh, quite a famous modern violin maker. His name is Francesco Bisolatti. And while I was there, I also collected my woods over there. A friend and myself went over to, to Yugoslavia where the maple is, kind of like Minnesota, really. Only beautiful, big, huge maples. Maybe uh, one out of 200 maple trees has this curl in the wood. It's, a figure in the wood that we use for violin. And we finally ended up shipping four and a half tons of maple and spruce. Over here is uh, the spruce that I brought back from Italy. And this, this spruce is special. In fact, I got this spruce in the same valley that Antonio Stradivari would get his spruce, Val de Femme, or Valley of Flame. And the, the grain in is very nice and tight and even all the way across. And that's what we want for violin making. I love to... Uh, go to all my wood supply and look at the different pieces, you know, and say, oh, now this would be nice, or this would be nice, or whatever. So that is a luxury. A lot of island makers have to, to order their wood from a dealer somewhere, and whatever they get, they get, you know. So I brought home all the wood I'll ever use, and my kids too, but, uh, and then I have found beautiful woods in Minnesota, maple, beautiful maple too. So and of course, maple is my favorite tree. <laughs> That's what we use for the violin. And, 
And if you look outside here, it's a lot of maples. And so every spring we punch holes in that maple tree and we have, uh, and we uh, make maple syrup. I came back to, the, to Minneapolis and opened up my shop right near Orchestra Hall down there. Then I met my wife and we moved back up here to the homestead. My uh, grandpa Anderson uh, came with his family. Well, no, he was, he came with his dad, my great grandpa. They moved to, uh, to America and they ended up down in uh, Lyon County near Marshall, southern part of the state. They were farmers and uh, the Anderson lived on this farm and next door were the Wonderlings, German family. And I think three of the Anderson boys married three of the Wonderly girls. And my grandma Anderson, who was a Wonderly, uh, got uh, uh, TB. And the doctors back then, he said, take her up to the North Woods and where the air is clean, fresh. Well, I don't know if there's anything to that scientifically, but, and he did. I worked by myself and didn't want to give away all my secrets, you know, <laughs> violin making secrets. Huh? But then uh, I had other people that were repairing violins and whatnot were interested and I thought, nah, why not? So I showed them how to make a violin. And then now I have these kids that are doing very well, the ones that are serious about it. Play, they're playing, you know? And I thought, wouldn't it be neat if they could make their own violin? And that's what they thought too. So I have nine kids now studying and I suppose in the past I've, I've uh, taught another 10, 15 people. I have, uh, one of my students is here today and she's doing a good job on her violin. This is her first violin, it's right over there on the bench. Uh, when she finishes her violin, hopefully it'll be wonderful when she'll have made her own violin and she'll play her own violin. I started playing violin in Arnie's orchestra in fifth grade. I wasn't planning on playing violin, but my friends were all playing. So I was like, hey, I want to go with you. It's been cool to see my work come together. Like when we started, it was, is this actually going to be a violin or is this going to be something that's going to kind of be put on the back burner and I'm not going to get finished. Um, but it's been kind of rewarding to see it take shape and just, he opened up his home and his shop to us to come out here and work on the violins and play with him weekly. <laughs> My orchestra, my kids' orchestra, actually there's adults in, in it as well. I think there's around uh, 70 of us. And um, that was when I was young and ambitious. And I teach all these kids had half hour lessons every week. And then uh, we put them all together on Tuesday nights and, and played concerts. Yeah, they're all little rascals, every one of them. <laughs> Where are you, Natalie? Are you in this I'm one? I'm not in those yet. Was that, that was the oh, year that, that I joined. Oh, okay. Well, then it got better as the year <laughs> went on. To date, I think I've made 380 violins and some cellos and violas, whatnot. So, Violin uh, has been my life. Uh, it's been my uh, livelihood. It's been my fun, especially with our Scandinavian music. So I'm happy I chose to be a violin maker. But funny, life makes circles because now I spend more time teaching violin. I have about 30 kids I'm teaching to play violin. This is um, a Swedish march and a very popular one. In fact, uh, even today it's used if, if the wedding party is going to the church, a lot of times the fiddlers will precede them and play in these marches on the way to the church. 
And uh, this is one of those, Apubu. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram online at 967cram.com. <laughs>